Midland Sports. Coach Gail Johnson from Chaparral, always so generous with her time, joining us here on the show right now because the Pumas are off to an undefeated start. They've got a tournament title under their belt. Things are going really well. So, Coach Johnson, my first question for you is, a uh, great start to the season. Are you pleasantly surprised? Did you expect this? How would you kind of gauge the start to the season for the Pumas? Well, I think we're starting off pretty strong, actually. Uh, we'll always take 7-0. Um, we have a new setter, which is always um, difficult because your setter is like your quarterback, uh, speaking of football. So <laughs> she's um, inexperienced with this team, but she is picking it up quick. Um, but we have some pretty heavy hitters. And so, so far, so good. Um, I don't know how long we'll remain undefeated because we have a pretty tough uh, preseason, but we'll see how it goes. You know, and it's coach, it's not like you're going and playing some obscure teams we've never heard of. I mean, you've got wins against, let's see, uh, Santiago, Yukaipa. Mm -hmm. I know you beat King. We'll talk about the tournament in a second. You beat King at the tournament. Uh, you've beaten some good teams. So what have you liked about the Chaparral team so far? I like about this team, I like that they're all, uh, they work well as a team together. Uh, when things get tough, they decide to fight together. And so that's something that we've always worked on together at CHAP um, because not all teams are fun to play on. And so we work on having a really good culture. And so I like that they come together and that they're working hard when things get tough. Um, because like you said, at our tournament, our King match could have gone either way. It was 13-13. Um, so when those things happen, you just hope for the best. So I like how they're coming together. I like how they're adjusting to a new offensive system and a new setter. And they're working really hard every day. All right, Coach, you talked about keeping it fun and building that culture. How, how do you do that off the court? Do you guys go play laser tag? Is it movie night at Coach's house? Like, how do you do that off the court? Well, as soon as we have tryouts, literally like the next day or two, we go to the beach for three days and we work on, we talk about our team goals, what we want to accomplish during this, this season, how we're going to treat each other. Um, just being a former player, I know um, – what it's like when if people aren't friendly or luckily I was always on good teams, but you have to, you have to teach the kids how to be good teammates along with fundamentals. So that stuff is important. And plus um, they're coming off of club and club is rigorous and club can be stressful. So high school, they can learn and have fun and they can, it can be everything. And that's what I really want it to be for them. You know, Coach, you mentioned club. I think the last time we spoke is during COVID and, and club and the season were, you know, crossing over, and, you know, but now it's kind of back to normal and stuff. Um, when, you, when you get these girls from, from the club teams, is it just, uh, is it like, I, you know, icing on the cake? Like you're just trying to add to what they've already learned. They've already gone against some great competition. They've already probably played a ton in the off season. I call it off season, you know, the high school mm -hmm. off season. Uh, but when you get them, obviously, you know, they're coming in. It's not like they've been sitting on the couch for six months. They're, they've been playing and they've been going at it. No. In fact, all these girls who you basically have to play club to make um, one of the programs in our league because our league is so competitive. So, no, they come in and they have learned a lot in club. But in our program at Chaparral, we still work on fundamentals every day because if your fundamentals aren't strong, then you are not going to be consistent. And then if you're not consistent, then it's hard to execute when the game is on the line. So every day at the beginning of practice, we are working on fundamentals. And so those need to be worked on in club and in high school. So that's something that we always work on. All right, Coach, let's that's talk. That's a really good question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Coach, let's talk about your star, Bella Ritterberg. I mean, she, I think she was the MVP, right, at the tournament yes. at Grand Terrace that you guys just won. Just won. What, what, is, what makes Bella such a special player? What I love about Bella, what everyone sees in the community are her stats. And she is a fiery player. Like, she, she hits the ball, and everyone in the gym stops and watches because it's so explosive, and um, she just – she is so explosive and powerful. And, but what people don't know about her is that she is the greatest teammate, the nicest girl, um, is never unkind to kids who are not as skilled as her. She'll never give attitude to someone who's not playing well or, um, you know, because sometimes when things get intense and the pressure builds up and someone messes up, Sometimes it's hard not to show frustration with that player. She will never do that. 
She never has done that. Even since the beginning, since her freshman year, she's al already been, she came in as a freshman being one of the most skilled players that we had. She's never treated anyone less than. She's kind, the best teammate, one of the hardest working kids in the gym. And I actually coached her when she was 10 and 11 and 12 in club. And so it's been fun to see her come full circle. So it's not just her as a player, it's her just as a person. I'm so proud of her. And one thing about the tournament, um, so Grand Terrace, we played at Grand Terrace and their JV team was there um, doing lines and doing the book. Like their whole team just sat and watched her play and cheered for her. And she took pictures with them. And I think she's friends with all of them on Snapchat or Instagram now because she, and she just took time and took pictures and she just has the best heart. And so I just, I love her. So coach, I'm assuming, I haven't seen this yet, but I'm assuming she wears the C and it's not for Chaparral because she's the captain, right? Of the team. Oh, yes, this is. Yes, she is the captain. So you've been around volleyball for a long time. How does it make your job easier as the head coach when, like, your best player is also, like, the best person and the leader and the captain on your team? It, it certainly does make my job easier. And and like I said, we really work on our culture at Chaparral because I – so just being the head – I want a certain culture and the program to be a certain way. And with players like her, she, she has the same vision. We talk about this and what we want. Um, if you come to Chaparral, this is going to be your volleyball experience. And so she shares that vision and she makes sure that, hey, she holds people accountable and um, she leads by example. And so she's just a dream. <laughs> I'm going to have to find out. Maybe, maybe she's like TikTok famous or Instagram famous with all those uh, players wanting pictures with her. I'm gonna have to, I guess I'll have to I know. Her. She might be. I don't know. <laughs> but she's great. And you know what? She can dance, too. Like, in practice, like, we'll, we'll play music sometimes. She'll let it go. And it's impressive. <laughs> uh, then I'm guessing she's probably on TikTok, right? I, I'm not on TikTok, but from what I hear, everyone just dances on it. That. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's what I hear. Uh, Coach, <laughs> let's talk about Southwestern League play. You, you touched on it a little bit. You know, you're mentioning like, you know, you got to play club to make one of these programs in the Southwestern League. We know that because it's so good. The, the, the level, the elite level the Southwestern League is at. How, how do you see the Southwestern League this year? And where does where does Chaparral fit in there in terms of maybe, you know, being in the hunt for a league championship at the end? Well, I definitely think that we're in the hunt, but um, but that's what's fun about our league. I feel like most of the teams are in the hunt this year. Um, if you look at common opponent, uh, opponents, uh, Marietta Valley, they just played Santiago. They beat them in three and we beat them in four. So on paper, Marietta Valley might be better. Um, Great Oak is off to an undefeated start. Or Great Oak is doing very well. Marietta Valley is doing well. Vista is always good. So um, and TV, you can't forget TV. So it'll be fun to see where it all plays out. I think it's up for grabs. So we got to execute and, but it'll be fun. Whatever happens, it's going to be fun and it's going to be a great experience. And I'm, I'm just assuming all the girls probably know each other, right? Like through yes. high school and club, they've probably gone up against each other quite a bit already. Yes. A lot of them play club together. Um, in fact, yeah, they know each other. They know each other's families. Um, yes, they know they're very familiar with each other. All right. Speaking of families, coach, you're a volleyball family, obviously. You had daughters, yeah. you know, playing volleyball, and I, you got a couple playing in college right now as mm -hmm. well. Has it always been like nonstop volleyball for you in your in your household? Has it always been volleyball, or did you like tell your daughters, let's try basketball, let's try soccer? Has it always just been wall to wall, nonstop volleyball in the Johnson household? Yes. Well, I currently have three playing in college. Oh, three, and then okay. I have one at Chaparral. Um, yes. Yeah, so, well, I, I just, but actually I had my girls play soccer until they got to uh, high school and then they just had to play club all the time. But I, cause I wanted them doing something other than volleyball too. Um, and I love soccer. I grew up playing soccer as well. Um, but I just, I had them play volleyball because that's what I knew. Um, I wasn't going to force them to play it if they didn't like it, but that's kind of, I just think kids need to be involved in something. And that's what I took them to do, and it stuck. So, and I'm grateful because I think it's been a good experience for all of them, and it teaches them how to work with people and teammates, and 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 just all those great things that sports brings. 
Yeah, it definitely teaches you about thing. it definitely teaches you about real life, right? Like you said, like getting along oh, sure. and having to cooperate and you know, uh, authority, you got coaches, like all those sorts of good things about um, real life. And I, and I will say this coach, and because I wanted to ask you, so my daughters, uh, I got one who did gymnastics and then she went into cheerleading and then I got one who's a swimmer and I don't really know much about any of those things. So for me as a parent, it was easy because I'm like, I don't know if she did that well. I guess she did. It looks, it looks nice. But you being a volleyball coach, you try to step back and say, okay, I'm just going to be mom. I'm not going to critique everything. I'm not going to watch their college game highlights and tell them what they're doing wrong. Um, do, do you have to separate coach and mom or is it all together? How, how do you balance that? There was definitely a learning curve. When I would talk to him at the beginning, I started off being their coach. And then on the way home from practice, I would try to tell him everything, like break it down for him. And they would look out the window, the opposite window. <laughs> like they did not want to hear anything I had to say. And so I had to learn. I had to take a step back. And then I have to, now I just realize I have to wait for them to come to me. And when they come to me, I will tell them and give them any advice that they want. But they need a mom more than they need a volleyball coach. So I've definitely had to learn that balance. <laughs> Even though I want to tell them everything that they need to know, I just have to, they need a mom first. Coach, let's give them a shout out. Give your, give your daughters a shout out on here. Maybe, they're, maybe they'll be watching. Definitely. Hi, Morgan, Elizabeth, Anna, Kate. I love you. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Keep working hard. She's going to text you right now about, uh, you know, your right. foot, your foot you placement. Be watching. Yeah. <laughs> Coach, you're the best. Thank you so much. That was a lot of fun. I do appreciate it. Congrats on the undefeated start. I know uh, you've got some tough games coming up, especially as you go into matches in Southwestern League play. So it'll, it'll get tough for you guys. But great start. Congrats on the tournament title as well. Hey, and thank you for all you do for our community and the kids. Thank you. I appreciate it, Coach. Uh, all my pleasure for sure. That is Coach Gail Johnson from Chaparral here on the Inland Sports Show talking some Puma volleyball. When we